Hey fellow nature lovers, it's Emily. Welcome to another Grass River micro class. Today we're gonna to be talking about ruffed grouse, which are one of my favorite birds for two reasons. One, they are always sending me into laughing fits when they explode out of the underbrush in front of me when I'm walking through the woods or a swamp and they scare the living daylights out of me. Um, and then second of all though, they have some of the craziest and coolest winter adaptations of any bird that spends the winter in Northern Michigan. And these grouse adaptations to winter definitely run the gamut from both morphological adaptations, so changes in their body, um, to behavioral adaptations, changes in the way that the grouse acts. So let's start with the morphological adaptations. Um, so first of all, this grouse on this mount probably died, I'm gonna guess, sometime in the warmer part of the year. Um, and that's because of two things. Well, actually a couple things, but um, lack of feathers extending down its lower legs, which um, is something that grouse grow in the wintertime, sort of um, as extra insulation. They sort of act like boots. So this is an example of a detached foot slash leg of a grouse. Um, where you can see those feathers running much further and much thicker down um, the lower leg. And then also on this foot, this is like my favorite grouse adaptation, it's so cool. Um, they develop what are called pectinations on their three leading toes in the winter on either side of them. And they're basically little fringe-like growths that increase the surface area of the grouse foot in the winter they basically act like snowshoes. So the grouse can, is um, better able to stay on top of snow as it walks um, and it can get away from predators and forage and move around more efficiently. Um, and another use um, researchers think that these pectinations have is that it, they're sort of like grippy gloves um, and that they let the grouse grip onto ice covered branches um, in a better way, which is important because grouse eat mostly tree buds, especially um, buds of flower buds of quaking aspen um, in the winter. And that leads us to another crazy morphological adaptation of grouse in the winter. They um, their cecum, which is sort of a pouch, kind of like an appendix, um, in their digestive system that houses bacteria, um, that produce enzymes that are able to break down cellulose. Um, their cecum enlarges substantially in the winter time so that they can house more of that bacteria because the buds are really rich in fiber and cellulose that, that the grouse cannot break down on its own. Um, and then last morphological adaptation is you can see that this grouse, I don't know if you can see the nostril right there, the little hole in the beak. Um, but again, this grouse probably died um, in the warmer part of the year because in the winter, this nostril would be covered with um, feathers. And that's a way for the grouse to warm up the frigid winter air before it travels into the body to minimize that chilling factor. All right, let's move on to the behavioral adaptations now. Two main ones that I wanna mention. So first of all, grouse do this crazy thing called snow roosting, where they literally dive headfirst into the snow, usually from a branch and then they dive bomb in um, and they sort of swim through the snow for a bit. And then at the end of that tunnel that they've created, they excavate with their wings sort of a cavity. And it's like they're making like an igloo that um, the snow, snow is actually a really good insulator. So um, that cavity can often be much warmer. Um, it rarely will drop below 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And that can be much warmer than um, the open air on frigid winter nights throughout much of the grouse range. Um, and that is really important because it can provide up to 30% energy savings for the grouse. Um, so second major behavioral adaptation is we were talking about how grouse eat um, the male flower buds of quaking aspen mostly in the winter earlier. Um, and they don't just forage on these buds all day long. They actually usually do just one or two bouts of feeding um, only for a couple minutes each really quick. They gorge themselves and then travel somewhere safer to digest their food. Um, but what enables the grouse to be able to do that, to gorge themselves, is an organ called a crop. Um, and that's a pouch on their esophagus that basically acts like the cheeks of a chipmunk. 
Um, and then later that food, those tree buds pass into the bird's gizzard where it can actually start digesting them. And that's an adaptation to one, avoid, um, you know, sitting on a leafless tree where you're basically a sitting duck for um, aerial predators like great horned owls or hawks or eagles. Um, but also it minimizes the grouse's time out in the open. Um, and so it therefore minimizes the time that they're really exposed to the elements and really um, that cold air that, cr that they need a lot of energy to be able to heat their body up against. All right, so I hope that I have passed on some of my rough grouse winter enthusiasm to you. Um, I will see y'all next week. Bye.